corner, he comes to us tonight from Brooklyn, New York. Record of 14 and 0, 9 KOs to his credit, fighting out of Bay City, Michigan, introducing Butter. Sex toys, you know. Got a lot of young ladies, man, that's with the biggest dick, so I decided to get into business, man. You know? Right here, man. I had this store for like about three months, you know. This store in the mall over here, I had for about a year. You know, relatively good business, but you know, it's also a struggle, man. All business is the first year, it's a struggle, they say. So, uh, just trying to figure it out, man, you know, grind it out and make something happen. The fight continues on, man, you know, it's about the fight of life, you know, it ain't only about fighting in the ring. But it's about survive, 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 survive. What up, guys? You know, uh, eventually we're gonna have our own line. You know, still in production. It still ain't been completed. So we got to uh, work what we got right now. You know.
have some money, made an investment, and jeopardized my kid's house. You know, and now they're telling us we gotta get out. What's up, Fun? This is my man Punch right here. Hey, you know, he ain't one of the flying guys, you know? He works with the phone, he's a phone guy, he don't work with me. I was trying to steal him from the phone guy because he's one of the best flying guys out here, man. Come on over there, man. Did a real number on me, brother. Took all my money. You know, I'm in the process of now filing some paperwork. Make a, uh, file a claim to sue these guys for six, $77 million, you know? fighting back, man. Because they fraudulently put me in this mall right here without giving me the opportunity to let me know who I invest my money in. So how long you been over here? Over here now, man. Actually, I've been here about maybe uh, 10 months now, you know? 10 months counting now. I knew it was going to be difficult up here as far as the salesman, but I had a plan. I came out with the flyer technique, man, where we advertise and we talk to people to come up here and we got the ladies to come up with real good flyers and, you know, aggressive salesman work. And uh, to the point where the security guard, everybody started getting jealous, man. They didn't think that that we can uh, uprise, uprise and uplift the store and make it the store that it turned out to be. It was a pretty good store, man. We was making pretty good money. And uh, until they come with all these eviction letters telling everybody they gotta leave out of the blue. You know what I'm saying? As you can see, man, I, you know, the ladies hooked up the windows, man. You know, the windows are very beautiful. You know, you know what I'm saying? Nice and shy. We got my employee over here for Tamer. You know, she likes to be on the computer a lot, you know, she don't, you know, you know, but she get busy though, you know. We, uh, you know it's a pretty nice store, man. The ladies like it, it's cozy. You know, this is basically all of the lingerie. You know? You know me, I'm a fanatic, man. I got my pictures all on the world, man. I'm I'm, I'm I love me. I love who I am. I'm Mitch Rose, man. This we call we all we call it the boom boom room. You know we kind of you know we kind of low on toys now. We pretty much liquidate the place, man, because of uh, you know we might be here a couple months or you know six months, two three months, whatever the court procedures are uh, uh, take. Because I'm taking these guys to court, man. They gonna give me some of my money back, man. You know what I'm saying? I put all my money and hard work into this business, and Katrina's diary, like I say, it's gonna live on, man. It's, you know, I fight now for, you know, uh, good health and, and uh, keep weight down, man. As you can see, I'm looking in the mirror, I'm like, God damn, you know, but I get it down, man, eventually. You know, downtown, man, this is Fulton Street, man, and, and this is where it all started for me, man. You know, when I was seven years old, man, I first came down here, me and my posse, man, and we used to steal skateboards, man. That store right across the street, that Levitt's right there furniture store, man, was, was McCory's, man, back, man, back, man, back when I was seven years old, man. And we used to run through there and steal candy and toys, and, and eventually we started pickpocketing out of that store, man, and running through here downtown, man, all the way till we graduated to snatching gold chains and gold bracelets, and you know, and man, we just turned out to be bastard kids down here man i mean i must have caught a case i must have got arrested a couple times down here you know detectives man they used to sometimes catch me man i was so little i was just a fat little snot-nosed kid man that uh that you know they used to grab me man and drive me around the corner somewhere man and just smack me man and say man you better not catch you down here no more you know and uh you know all the way man until you know we wind up being in Midtown, man, and 34th Street, where we really start digging pockets, and, you know, and everything else, man, criminally, man, you know. Uh, eventually, man, that's when I, you know, became, I, you know, became a boxer through those years, man. And, and uh, you know, 
I just continued on the struggle, man. I, I realized that it wasn't right living that kind of life. And, you know, I wasn't no guy that wanted to murder nobody or kill my brothers and sisters. You know, I became righteous, man, when I was uh, about maybe 11 years, 11, 12 years old, man. I had gained knowledge of self, man. And, and the 5% nation, man, really civilized me, man. And it took time for it to sink, but it did civilize me, man, and uh, make me know some of the things that that is right in life you know thank god for boxing man because it really uh gave me a direction in life man and made me see that it's more important things it's doing and, and to be a, a striver man strive for success you know so literally i ca captured some publicity you know in the golden gloves you know, I made it to the finals, man. I, I, I lost in the finals. A lot of people thought I won the fight, you know, uh, for the guy named Nathan Williams. But, you know, they gave him my gloves, man. He got them, and I got the silver. But, you know, hey, second place ain't that bad either, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate it. I was in the newspaper for that. And, and uh, you know, I, a lot of people knew me from way back when I was a young amateur at the age of 19 years old, man. I'm 38 years old now, man. And I eventually went on and, as a struggling boxer and got the opportunity to fight Butterbean at Madison Square Garden in front of all of those people, man. And knock that guy out on, uh, you know, ESPN and, you know, and HBO was supposed to be on, but they, you know, you know they cut it out for whatever they reason. You know, you know, from all of them journeys, man, that's what made me, uh, you know, the trials and tribulations I went through made me decide to, to go ahead on and, and write a book, man. I had to write a book about things that happened in my life. Eventually, you know, uh, after boxing, man, I mean, things didn't work out as far as me getting a bunch of money and and all of those things like that. But, you know, I, I appreciate the uh, publicity I have got and received as a boxer. I've been in a lot of magazines and newspaper articles, man, so I did good, man. You know, I, I know boxers that had 20 straight wins, man, good records, you know, 25, 30 wins, one loss. Never even heard of them before, man. But a lot of people know Mitch Rose, man, so it's a blessing, man, you know. But, you know, the fight continues after that, man. I mean, after boxing, is still a life, man. You know, I went on and got married, and, and I got four kids, man, and... You know, and I'm a father, man. I, I, I believe in taking care of my kids, man. I don't know why our black brothers, man, tend to uh, walk away from their kids, man. You know, your kid is your blood, man. I mean, how could you neglect them? You know what I'm saying? So, man, I'm I'm still out here in the fight, man. The fight ain't over, man. It's a fight bigger than being in the ring. Now I got to fight, man, to make sure my kids stay in school and get the best of school and the best of health care and and uh, to be healthy, man, and to bring them up in a good environment, man. I got them living in the house in Long Island. I got to work hard, man. Hey, yo, man, what's that situation with you and Tyson, man? Detectives here at the 79th Precinct have a shredded up mink coat in their possession as evidence, and they've been interviewing witnesses all day long, including Tyson's limo driver. The question now remains, will any of those witnesses back his accuser up? 32-year-old former boxer Mitchell Rose had his last big fight in 1996 at the Garden, a second-round technical knockout over Butterbean of Michigan. He says he used to dream about fighting Tyson, and yesterday morning he claimed he was able to escape every unexpected punch but one. He came at me the second time, you know, and he came at me swinging and charging and stuff, you know, and, and you know, in the midst of them trying to break it up again, you know, he happened to catch me you know, with a shot to the knee. Police say they're investigating an altercation here at the Sugar Hill Club at 8 o'clock Sunday morning. Rose, a father of two, claims he introduced himself to Tyson. The two had drinks, and while leaving outside, he made a comment about the women with Tyson. That's when he told investigators the former heavyweight champ lost his infamous temper and tried to knock him out, hitting him in the neck, shredding his mink coat to pieces when Rose fell to the ground, injuring his hip and back. I'm standing there looking at this guy like, you know, he actually ripping my mink coat up, you know, and uh, so I ran in the car and I got a pen, you know, I was, you know, I was figuring out I got to suppress this guy somehow, you know, catch him, you know, so, you know, I wrote down the plate number, I came back to the car, wrote down the plate number, and then, you know, the limousine took off, 
The owner of the club, Aaron Freeman, has given his statement to police. An altercation did take place, but he says there was no physical contact. Police asked for the videotape from the two surveillance cameras, but it's been taped over. It's continuous running. So every 10 hours the tapes keep running, unless there is an altercation and you stop it and take it out. So you're but, saying it has been taped over, but not on purpose. Yes, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Tyson's attorney tells News Channel 4 he's done his own witness interviews and Rose's allegations are not supported by anyone. He says that Tyson is not on probation, not on parole, continues on his own to do community work, and in fact looks forward to a comeback fight scheduled for April against Lennox Lewis. Live in Bedside, Kendra Farr, News Channel 4. Sue, back to you. Man, I just was hanging out one day at the club, Sugar Hill, my club. I always be going to, man. On late night, two, three o'clock in the morning, chilling out. I'm drinking a few beers, chilling, whining, dying, and wangling. I see Mike sitting down. What up, Mike? Yo, what up, man? Yo, Miss Rose, I'm there knocked out for the day. Mike give me a pound, we kick it, whatever, you know? Mike said, yo, yo, you wanna buff a blunt with it? You wanna buff a blunt with me? Yeah, nigga, yeah, yeah, I wanna puff a blunt with Mike. Everybody, you know, that's the beautiful thing to be able to puff a, puff, a, puff a blunt with Mike, man, you know what I'm saying? Mike Tyson, man, you know, greatest fighter ever lived. I've been a fighter for 20 some years and I love Mike and, and I love the opportunity to smoke a blunt with him. And you know, I done met Mike before a couple times and you know, and, and I'm not an insecure type of guy, you know, I'm a friendly type dude. So I gave him a pound because I knew Mike was always a friendly type of dude. Every time I met him, I met him about three or four times. Every time I met him, say what's up, Mike? Mike say what's up to me, man. So I thought it was all right for me to uh, say what's up to Mike that night. Since I was fucking around with him, wasn't around too. Man, and we kicked it, man. And Mike uh, invited me to the table to smoke a blunt with him, man. And you know, and I appreciated that. Man. We we got blasted up, man, and we smoked some trees together, man. It was like, you know, being in heaven, man, smoking with the former heavyweight champion and the greatest fighter of all time, Mike Tyson, man. You know what I'm saying? In Best Guy of Brooklyn, man, that's where we did it at, man. We sat down, we chilled. You know, we got people say, oh, you want his money, and I ain't no money, man. I ain't want Mike's money, man. I had $100,000 in my safe deposit box, man, at the time of this incident, man. You know, and I had a pocket full of money on me that night. I had about 3000 on me. So I'm the one who bought the Moet and all of that stuff, man. I wasn't no crap. After we smoked the blood and hung out and chilled and kicked it, you know, I, I saw him outside of the club later on. And he might act irrational, man, like still going back into the Bentley's days, just standing, I'm just standing, man, out on the stoop and Mike walking into the limousine with the young ladies, man, and you know, that we was all at the table with that night smoking weed and stuff. And I, it just dawned on me, I said, man, this dude might get himself in trouble with something, you know? And I just told him, yo, be careful with those chicken heads, because he was going to the limousine with like three shorties, man. And it kind of like echoes, you know, it kind of was like loud, man. And, uh, man, and then the people were, you know, all out there, about 15 people standing around the club, was woo, 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 woo kind of like, you know, kind of instigating it, you know, the whole scene, man. Everybody was surrounding the place, and you know, about 15, 17, 18 people outside, and, and people started instigating the Brooklyn style, ooh, ooh. You know what I'm saying? Hype Mike up. And uh, it kind of like got Mike a little upset. Mike started staring at me, man. And you know what I'm, and I'm looking at Mike, and I'm like, damn, Mike, yo, I'm kind of trying to tell yo, chill, man. It ain't no problem, man. It was, you know, it was, you know, it was just some words that just slipped out, man. You know, and uh, and Mike stand, and I'm backing up. I'm like, yo, Mike, chill, man. Go ahead, man. But it seemed like that's what really prompted him to attack, man, because. Now he like, yo, he wanna you know, he wanna see if he can back me up in the corner so I can go like a bitch or something, you know what I'm saying? That's what I believe he tried to do, because he, you know what I'm saying, he looking, I'm telling him, chill. Then he ran towards me, yo, he's a bitch ass motherfucker, man, he's a disrespectful motherfucker, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, go ahead, Mike, get a goddamn baby, there ain't no big day, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, you know, step it back. So his bodyguard, his body security guards grabbed him up, restrained him and all that, man. You know, so I right, took him back to the limo. Mike did the football pass and came around and caught me in the middle of the street, man. Nigga, like, what up, nigga? You know, he, he stepped out so he could get his balance, man. So he could just take my head off or something, man. And I'm 
I'm like this, I'm all, you know, slipping his shoes on and shit. Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? And yo, I'm with your nigga getting ready to swing, you know, and then the security guards just rushed him. So as they rush him, Mike Steel reached in, grabbed me, man. You know what I'm saying? He holding me and shit in a bear hug. I'm like, oh, shit, Mike. You know, to myself, Mike got me, man. Mike Tyson. Nigga get ready to hook up, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, as a nigga holding on to me, you know, I'm flashing back to the old Midtown days when we used to break out of the police. So I slide out of here. I'm like, this old shit. Slide out of the court. Nigga left him with the coat in his hand, but the coat dropped. You know what I'm saying? But I was happy to be free. I'm out of the coat. But as I tumble, you know what I'm saying? I tumble, oh, falls down. Now I see a shadow. I'm thinking, Mike, you're ready to come like Start me out or something. You know what I'm saying? But they let me strain and grab them up again. While I'm on the ground, I felt a few. One dude I knew from around the way picked me up. You know what I'm saying? Help me stumble to the car. So I stumble to my Jeep across the street. You know what I'm like? Oh shit, then Mike, I'm looking at Mike on my, by my truck. He picks he goes and picks the coat up. So fuck. Pick that shit up, man. Fuck. Crazy, I paid all that money for that coat. Everybody like that coat. You know what I'm saying? Ripping my shit up. So, I said, oh shit. You know they think I'm going to get a cat or something. Man, I'm not from the, I know, I know the hood, man. I know the law. But I ran to get a pen. I went up in the joint and shit. Good thing I had. I don't even really have a pen. I found a pen. No ran up out of the car. Go down a license plate and I'm in the middle of the street, man. I'm right now license plate and I'm like, nah, you ain't getting away, motherfucker. I'm calling the police. But I'm standing in the middle of the street, man. Like, oh shit, man. This nigga ripped my shit up, man. My shit all torn up on the street. You know what I'm saying? Everybody laughing, looking at me and shit, man. So, all right, y'all wanna laugh, man? Fuck it, man. Took out my phone, man, called Dow 911, man. You know what I'm saying? I had to make a police report, you know what I'm saying? I had to do something in order to get my conversation. People took, oh, you a snitch, you this and that. I ain't want to lock the nigga up. I just wanted my coat fixed. I wanted my coat and then some conversation for my elbow being hurt. When I had to, when I fell on that damn concrete weighing 275 pounds. New boxer Mitchell Rose with his golden gloves around his neck joins me right now with him is his attorney Sanford Rubenstein. Welcome, gentlemen. Now, Mr. Rubenstein, I promise I won't try the case here. Just a quick uh, sort of, how the heck did this happen? You always wanted to fight Mike Tyson, but not like this, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, uh, Mike, Mike, I don't know. He just got some type of attitude problem. And, you know, I, I just said one comment. I just, you know, I just wanted to protect the guy. I wanted the guy to, you know, to be aware of the young ladies he was with, knowing that I, uh, you know, I read about the sexual assaults that's, that that was pretending on the guy, you know. And it came at you. So, you know, I mean, he showed me a good time, so I wanted to just, you know, volunteer and show him some type of, you know, respect, too. <laughs> now, Mr. Rubenstein, you are uh, have filed a lawsuit for $66 million. What, what are you claiming here? Well, the lawsuit has three components to it. First, a claim for the injury to his body. Mm -hmm. Secondly, property damage. His coat was torn up ferociously by Mike Tyson, we allege in the complaint. Um, a mink coat. And, yes, and thirdly, and most importantly, punitive damages. Most of the damages here are to punish, punitive, so that this becomes something that never happens again. Mm -hmm. A jury will decide how much Mr. Rose is entitled to for what happened to him, and that's our system of justice. And it should be appropriate in this case that a jury decides injuries for physical damage, mm -hmm. for his property damage, and punitive. Mitchell, uh, how how you feeling now? I mean, how's your career going? What can, are you able to fight? What happened to you? Well, you know, I mean, knowing that I suffer a herniated disc, you know, the doctor and in my neck, neck actually. Oh. So, you know, the doctor tells me, you know, there's a possibility if any pressure goes onto that that spot on that spinal cord. It's a possibility that I can, you know, it can clog up, you know, uh, an artery and, and stop the, you know, the oxygen to my brain. So, you know, I'm, I'm very skeptical about fighting again. You know, I was thinking about it, but, you know, I mean, I really don't know if that might be the right thing to do. Yeah, I'm not sure you want to take that gamble. Mr. Rubenstein, a lot of people have gone after Mike Tyson and a lot of people have come away empty handed and frustrated. What makes you think you might win? Well, first
first of all, once a jury decides this case and renders a verdict, we will then collect that verdict from Mr. Tyson with the remedies that are allowed in the law. But first, let's have a jury hear what happened on that day and make a determination with regard to what damages Mr. Rose is entitled to. Uh, Mitchell, what, what do you think when you look at, I mean, here's a guy who had it all, has had so many uh, things happen to him, really, that seem to be his own darn fault. Look, look at him here. I mean, this is a guy who could be riding high, and, and now he's like scraping for a place to, to have a heavyweight fight. What does this do to your, your boxing world? Well, you know, I just look at the guy, you know, as a guy that, you know, made a tremendous amount of money mm -hmm. and, you know, we got a lot of people around that's, you know, is, you know, definitely heckling trying to, you know, to, to you know, get to him and get some of his money. You know, maybe he made a little too much money for his age. Yeah, some know. people might say you're one of them. Trying yeah, to I mean, money. the matter is, when you go within our system of justice and allow Mr. Tyson, whatever defense he chooses to raise in this case, mm -hmm. and have the case decided by a jury, that's all Americans' right. And when they have, behavior. when they believe that they've been wrong, they have a right to have a jury determine their damages. I mean. Sanford, Rubenstein, Mitchell Rose, I'm sorry, Mitchell, don't get mad, but we're out of time. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you both, and <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>
it's hard sometimes to make it up to the top, man, because they gonna steal a fight, they gonna steal a fight. Excuse me, brother. For sure. I'm telling some incense to get food to reach. I don't need no incense. Incense. Uh, incense. Five for the whole bag. No, dear dollar reach. This is how I make my living. I am hungry. I am hungry. I am too. You don't need a dollar reach, my brother. I don't even buy incense no more. I don't buy no more, brother. No. Would no? you spare some change for food? As hungry as you, brother. All right, okay. Could All you right. spare change for food, you brother? Enough, brother. You got enough food in your belly to last you for a month, man. <laughs> yeah. Don't pull that bullshit on me, man. <laughs> Introducing first in the blue corner, he comes to us tonight from Brooklyn, New York. He weighed in at 269 pounds. Red trunks tonight. He is appearing in his 12th professional bout. Please welcome Mitchell, the untouchable Rose. ahead of him or anything and uh, knowing that Great Valley made such a terrific athlete you know juvenile facility that I was able to come home and have some athletic abilities to uh, dream dare to dream basically you know so I went into the gym walked into the gym and uh, shadow box with my scientific shadow boxing 
that I did for the first six months prior to going into the gym. You know, and I used to be more gym, you know. Young kid, man, 16, 17 years old, with a physique that could beat the streets. You know, you know. Techniques, though, you know, saying this was a great fighter. But, you know, I don't know about his personality. I don't know if you want to inherit that. You know? You want to hold that head up, baby? You want that head to be up. You want to look like everybody else, huh? Hey, them shots ain't hurt you, did it? Hmm? You want to get out of this cold air, right? It's too much for him, right? Feel rough. I'm saying, 
that. I don't know. We can take it. Yeah, I feel like we can take it. You can take it, man. You can take this breeze or feel good. I feel good. That's my little girl, Katie, right here. Come here, Katie Cat. That's my Katie Boo right there. She's going to be the next Beyonce. Most talked about, most admired lady on the planet Earth, man. You know? Then I got my crazy wife, Dolores, over here, man. She's she's crazy, man. She's a CO, man. I don't know about you. Know, you know. But anyway, you know. She's CO, GO. <laughs> like the niggas did it, I don't know. You know? Hold up. So, dude, man, don't play with the commissary or nothing, man. Don't cause any frictions and disrespect your wifey, you know what I'm saying? On the job, man. You know, hold it down. Like Nubian Queen, man. Right, buddy? Mm hmm? You ain't going to the house. You ready to get some milk. That's why you holding your mouth down like that, huh? You can't wait to go get some milk, huh? Thirsty? You want some milk? You want some milk, buddy? Huh? You want some good old milk, huh? Alright, you're going to get some in a little milk. In a few more minutes, you're going to go in there and get you some milk, buddy. Uh, Alright. What'd you say, champ? Hmm? Man, you're going to be a great fellow, brother. You're going to be a great champion. Mitchie, champion, Rose Jr. Weighing in at 212 pounds with an undefeated record of 30 and 0. Mitchie, champion, Rose Jr. Uh, you got it. Go. I'm done. I'm waiting for one. My crib is better than the crib, man. Better than the crib right here, baby. Girls ain't got nothing on me, man. All them dudes with them cheap houses out there in Atlanta, Georgia, think they got something so big. That's the memorabilia, man, the Miss Rose memorabilia over there. You know what I'm saying? That's my girl over there. Come here, boy. That's Rocky. That's some of my wife, man. You got her. Picture of my wife. She old. That's when we was younger. Huh? Huh? It's a big house, pretty house, man. I gotta try to hold on to it though, baby. I gotta grind hard, hard, hard. Where we at right now, man? Yo, man, we, we in LG, baby. We over here, man, where it all started, man. Lafayette Gardens right here. You know? LG, the home of the bravest. I know you. I know you had a lot of peer pressure, though, man. You know what I'm saying? So when you started boxing, anybody look at you different when you started to do your thing in boxing? Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, you know, those are very negative, man. You know, people that we grew up around, man, they down each other. They try to hold each other down, man. We don't have a lot of positive role models out here, man. That uplift each other, man. You know what I'm saying? We jealous of each other. Black men is envy of each other, so they kill one another over envy. You know, you don't supposed to be envy. Y'all supposed to both have goals and dreams. You know, the kids out here supposed to have goals, man. They don't have no goals and dreams out here, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, now we got guys that want to be rappers that got dreams, man. But you know, we need more black doctors, man. We need more black lawyers, man. People that can represent us. We need more black politicians. There's a lot of negative elements out here. You know, there's a lot of brothers running around, man. Living uncivilized. And is wiping out their brothers, man, more than the Ku Klux Klan, man. This shit is crazy. When will this all stop? When we gonna stop this bullshit, man? You know? Brothers need to get some more knowledge of themselves, man. We need to take the bring the five percent nation back, so brothers can start building, man, about positive things together. Forming trooper squares. We used to form trooper squares in these joints, man. Right here on the corner, right in the middle of the block, over there. Sometimes in the park, right here, man. You know, and we built, man. We stayed in the trooper square, man, and we built about positive things. Nation of Islam, very positive. You know. 
and that's the black man's religion that helps out a lot of brothers and make a lot of brothers have some sort of civilization, man. This tree right here, man, it's a it all started too, man. When I first started selling my crack, man, I was we stand right under this tree right here, man. And you know what I'm saying? It was a crack spot across the street right there. Dread that been there, man, maybe three, four years already, man. And uh, when I got that first eight ball, man. I had me a crack right here in front of under this tree right here. And uh, crackheads are coming through here, man, coming through the aisle or coming through this way. And I intercept them, man. Hey, this shit, man, niggas had crack floating all over the brothers, man. Like, everybody had crack packages, man. Selling crack all over here, you know? A little stint, man. I thank God that I didn't get killed in the game or, you know, seriously hurt because, you know, I've had a lot of occasions and moments, man, where I could have definitely lost my life dealing in this drug game, man. It's definitely not a joke. And all these young brothers that's coming up, man, I suggest they get out of this game, man, now. But they got a chance, man. Because, man, it ain't nothing but self is headed to self-destruction. There's no way you're gonna get away with it, you know? There's no way it's gonna be a good thing to sell drugs, man. We need to put these economics together and do it ourselves. We can't keep on waiting for, you know, the white man to, uh, to take care of these things for us. They're not gonna do it, man. They don't, you know, really care for our safety, man. They'd rather go bomb up Iraq instead of helping out people in Africa, man. Yeah, but you got any answers in the book, though, man, for a lot of things you was just talking about? Is there a lot of answers in there, man? Yeah, man. A man. lot of solutions that you're giving out right now? Man, all of these things that I'm talking about right now is in my book, man. It's what my book is all about, what my book stands for. But that's why it's very important for all the youths, so all the people, the old people, the young people, the middle-aged middle -aged people, to get a copy of this book, man. But this book is what could change the world, man. This book can change black people and empower us, man, to happy, loving, caring, and very, very rich people, you know? Very important, man. I'm dropping jewels, man. Going back to 1969 when I came up in this joint. You know? LG. 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 Where I'm from, baby. How you doing? My name is Bruce Silverblade. I'm the uh, owner of Gleason's Gym. I've known uh, Mitch for quite a few years now, I guess. 20 years. Uh, at least 20, 20 years. Right? So, uh, neither one of us had uh, gray hair. Uh, uh, the, best, the best fight of your life was my favorite fight, when you beat up Butterbean. Right. God, right. that was a great fight. It was um, a last minute call. You were the substitute. Butterbean was mouthing off. He was a, he was a big time deal. And uh, everybody thought that he was going to be the next coming of the it's Lord. And what turned out, uh, he was mouthed off to the wrong guy. I remember you coming into my office, we were way in the back, he said, listen, I got to go back to those projects, man. I know where I'm living. This guy's saying bad things about me. I can't, I can't let that happen. He went there and just stopped it. And it was just great. And then and I, had, I had a lot of fun with that one. I was the matchmaker on that one. A lot of fun. And, uh, we had a lot of good times together. Yeah, man, we definitely did. You know, and in the book that I wrote, man, and you know, it's going to talk about a, a long relationship with us, man. And all the way back in the Golden Gloves when you seen me sitting on the steps right there, man. I was in sheer exhaustion, man. And I looked up, man. You said, hey, Mitch, great fight. <laughs> you know? You know that? Yeah, I was the president of the amateurs back then. I was putting those shows on. It was a good time. Yeah. That's been and, doing uh, it. So now you got to get married. You got to get your kids in here. Yeah. So uh, we'll start raising the kids. Yeah, I just had, you know, I just had a son four months old. Mitchu Champion Rose Jr., that's his name. You know, he looks just like yeah, me, man. Give him I, a few more months and then get him in here. Then get him to start breathing this air because we got some real fine air up there, man. It's a little different than most places. You better believe so get him. Get him used to it. He's going to be in here real fast, my boy. Good luck, man, on that Champ. book, man. Good, okay. Yep. See you, you know. All right. Come on, man. You know. Reggie Ford, man, we're gonna get a little workout. I did something for you. Yeah. You 
got uh, the rap, I got my rap. This is a whole guy. Yeah, so I did. Brothers is getting a raw deal, man, and they not they not bad people, man. If it wasn't for that nation of Islam, man, we'd be savages. A lot of obvious probably a savage. So the government or the black sisters and mothers shouldn't look so much down on the five percent brothers, man, because they some a lot of them be, turned out to be very positive. And religion, that's what religion is about. God bless the day. Talk me the hook. Happy constant. All hooks. Religion is about help, not hate. They didn't hate just because they said, yo, listen, the government, a lot of guys in the government is corrupt and doing different things. Look at all of the stuff that's coming out. You got you got politicians, all kinds of people, and the, you know, the scandals, and all of this corruption and shit going on, and the government, and I mean, we done ran into a whole bunch of stuff as far as the government balance over the years. So why is the 5% nation so wrong? Yeah, man. Uh -huh. You know? The man right here, that's Riddick's most bag man right there. Uh -huh. You know, I'm a Riddick. Bought him a Benz and gave him a few dollars out of the deal. He became champion of the world. Okay. Huh? I hear that. What's your name again? Mo Sins, huh? Mo, Mo the Pro. The best that ever did it. Hey, that's right. Got away with it. That's right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's Mo. You can't explain it no better than that, huh? Okay, baby. Word up. Okay, work up that sweat now. I need it, huh? Okay. 300 pounds. Uh -huh. Man, when the, when the that's doctor... That's what Mo is. Mo is about 300 pounds. Uh, the doctor told me that the other day, man. I just went into the practice. Work out a little bit more, you know? Right. Yeah. Gotta stay down. Yeah. Stay down. And all the 
punch that knockdown for the kid. This one right here. Life, man, this is what made me the character that I am, you know. Got the gym, man. God knows, I mercy on my soul. I don't know where I would be, you know. This is my goal, this is my dream. You know, this is my religion. You know, religion. I ain't had the greatest boxing record. World, but I did with Butterbean man, though. Yeah, man, how long you been? How long you knew this guy right here, man? Uh, more than 14 years. Been this has been my friend for a long time. Been the best diameter day. Okay. He hard to train, man. Mm, no, hey, no one is hard to train. If you get a trainer who know what they're doing, how could it be hard? You know, the, the, he can frustrate a lot of trainers, but I don't think he can frustrate me. I've been training boxing since 1969, at the age of 16. I was a young, very young kid, champion from Georgetown, the entertainment. He can go far away, but. He's just in discipline from time to time. You eat the wrong food. And you know, if he try to eat the right food and do the right thing, he can go somewhere. At least he got another three years at least in him. But he gotta live the life. Mitch! What I'm trying to point out, brother, is that. All right, you know, I beat Butterbean. I had a fight, a great fight. But the most important fight is life. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I stress, man, about how brothers doing each other out here, man, how we killing each other, man, and, you know, and over a little bit of money and petty situations, and, you know, we almost in there, I think, probably killing more than I rock, man. I mean, how you doing? This my man right here, this the famous massager, man. You catch this guy. What gym is you in? Church Street gym? You catch this massaging guy here, massage your balls, nuts. No, 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 no. Everything, man. You can fizzle. Whoa. <laughs> Wasting energy. Just block it. Pass it a little time. Get your win. Let you go back on the attack. You know, this book, man, you know, I want this book, man, to be able to change the world, man. You know, that's how I see it. I see it as far as, man, you know, you know, it got power, man. You know,
know, maybe things can change, you know? And I, I feel like I'm some sort of a god that can help change the world. But people read this book, man, they'll get a better understanding. Brother, you got a big boy. And uh, this is the time in America. We all need each other. Ones that don't need each other, that's out there. Most of the fighting and killing each other. Those guys got to be exterminated. Come out of the community, and out of the unity, universe. You know, because it's wrong what they're doing, and they need to wake up, man, and become more wise black men. Study the mathematics and the Holy Quran and the Bible, man. You know, God, Jesus Christ, whatever religion that motivates your positive spirit. You know, and uh. That's the way, you know, life has got to be, man. It's technology improvement, a lot of advancements. This is a beautiful world, man, with, you know, a lot of human uh, developments, you know. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of our people out there and our brothers out there is holding up the progress of America, holding up the progress of the constantly uh, industrialization, you know. Holding it up, brothers. I gotta wake up. It's time to wisen up, man. It's time to uh, become gentlemen and black men. I mean, you can hustle a little bit, you know, but nothing illegal, you know, and uh, find a way to file your taxes, whatever, quarterly, yearly, and, and be legitimate about it, man. You know, and uh, it's time to wake up, brothers. Enough is enough, man. I got a son, man, that admit you champion, Rose Jr. That's just race. So I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to try to make society safer for him. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving my life for my son, man. I'm giving my life if I have to. I have to give my life. Martin Luther King already gave his license. That was a big loss for our people and our community and in the world in general. We don't need no losses. Uh, something, man. Some kind of work out, you know? Well, that guy like me, man, that'd be crazy. Get a workout, you know? Well, if I can get a workout in every day, man, I'd be a happy man. You know? One thing I learned about the gym, man, no matter what, whether you're a champion or, or whoever you is, man, I learned, man, Supposed to stay at the gym the rest of your life, man. Physical fitness and health, no one fun thing in life. Boxing game, I ain't through with those heavyweights out there, man. They didn't hear the last of Mitch Rose, man. Nah, they ain't hear the last of Mitch Rose. You know what I'm saying?